people are really looking for from their fitness. They want to look better naked. I'm sorry, but that's usually right near the top Amen. of the list. Yeah. Regardless so of what anybody says, I'm doing it for my health. You know, my doctor told me I'm supposed to do this. It's like, you want to look better naked. Without Fear of Our Future podcast is for women who are passionately pursuing financial freedom using multiple streams of income and real estate to accomplish their goals. We are here to empower you to be brave, dream big, and design a life that you love that inspires others to do the same. I'm your co-host, Teresa Todd, founder of the Women's Real Estate Investors Network and author of the book, Without Fear of Her Future. And I'm Melissa Baker, a real estate investor and fitness coach specializing in turning properties from drab to fab. I'm here to help motivate and inspire you to build your dream life because girl, you deserve it. Today, we're chatting with Mike and Corey Beth Lepowski, focusing on their fitness program that delivers outstanding results in just 60 to 90 minutes per week. Corey Beth shared her personal journey that led her to Pure Physique, a fitness facility that offers short and high intensity workouts only two to three times a week. They emphasize the importance of a holistic approach to fitness, including nutrition and mindset and providing accountability to help people stick to their goals. Mike and Corey Beth, welcome to the show. Thank you for having us, Thank ladies. Thank you so much. We're excited to be here. Well, we are excited um, for our our audience to hear you. Uh, actually, Melissa and I both are not, we have the benefit of being your students. And yes. so we, and I just cannot wait for our audience to hear. I believe what you have built together is profound. Uh, it's doable and it works. Yes. And so mm-hmm. I am super excited for everyone to hear all about Pure Physique and just what it can do for you if you just put this to work in your life. So it, again, welcome. We're so excited you're here. So will you begin by kind of telling us what, how did Pure, Pure Physique even happen? How did it come to be and what has made your program so different? Uh, I guess I'll start from the beginning, but I promise I will fast forward that beginning all within about 60 seconds. Okay. It, a lot of this ties back to just me having a fascination as early as seven years old with muscle and strength and fitness. I still to this day do not know why. I'm just pretty certain that it was God given. Uh, and so I had determined at the age of 13 in front of all my friends while we were at the gym, I'm going to own a gym one day. Oh. And I knew nothing else of what I was going to do, but I just wanted to own a gym didn't know what, what it was going to look like. Um, That's awesome. What it turned out to be is very different than what I thought. But fast forward, I ended up going to college for physical education. I knew when I graduated, I could not be that gym teacher wearing super tight shorts <laughs> and surrounded by kids all day that maybe did not enjoy being fit. And so I said, I got to do something in this field related to exercise and specifically resistance training because I just loved spending my days in the gym. And once again, um, as God would have it, he just put me in the right place because shortly after graduating, I ended up in a boutique fitness studio. And this is now back in 1999. So boutique studios were really just on the yeah. come up. They, this was, it was not very common to see a lot of these places around. So I wound up at one in which they were promoting these 30 minute resistance training workouts. And it was the complete opposite of what I had done my entire training career, which at that point had been nine years worth of training from the age of 13 to 22. And it was a very unique approach. Again, very different from what I was accustomed to. I think most of us, when we first start going to a gym, we have it in our minds that we're supposed to be there five or six days a week. And we're supposed to be working out for an hour or 90 minutes. And their approach was 30 minutes, three times a week. And that was it. And I said, well, what about everything else? They said, what do you mean? What about everything else? (laughs) This is it. And I go, okay, well, this, this might be great for the regular folk, but I'm going to just keep doing my thing. (laughs) And, And so what happened was, is shortly thereafter, um, because I was newly out of college, right. In college debt had to start paying bills. I could no longer afford my regular gym membership. 
So I was forced to give their system a try. (laughs) And when I did, I was shocked at the transformation I made because here was nine years worth of training. And I come to a place where I just felt stuck, uh, couldn't make any greater improvements in terms of my strength or my muscle development. And then within just a few months of implementing this system, all of a sudden my body started really changing and I was, I was thrilled. So I've always been of the mindset that I'm more concerned with the results Mm -hmm. than the method or the path taken to get that result. So I bought in and shortly thereafter, I ended up going and training in Manhattan. And once again, God put me in the right place around the right people because I found a bunch of mentors that were also doing this type of training system, just different variations of it. And so this was a brand new world to me. And and this world opened up. I was welcomed with open arms and I just ended up around some really great people uh, who understood the, the science behind this and why it worked the way it did. And fast forward from there, I move out of the city and also off Long Island, make my way to Westchester, New York. And when I'm there, I decide I'm going to plant my flag and start training here and here only. And within three years of working as an independent contractor, I then opened up the doors to Pure Physique. And so I knew the model was going to be based around the 30 minute workout. Um, however, you know, we'll talk about it maybe later on. We made several iterations to finally land upon what it is that we do today. And a year later, I walked in the doors. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're definitely going to get to that story. <laughs> Absolutely. Before we go there, I just wanted to say, um, you know, Mike, I've been so honest with you. I felt exactly like you did when I had a heart because I was doing the same thing. I'd been working out, but it was always an hour a day three to four times a week. And so when, you know, you introduced this philosophy to me, I was like, eh, I'll try it because I was just like you. I was in between trainers. I was about to move and I was like, I don't really have anything else going. I'll try this and was blown away that I could get better results doing exactly what you taught um, in three, three times a week, 30 minutes each than I was. Mm-hmm. And, and so, yeah, what you have built and uh, is just amazing. And I don't know how come I, you know, here's the deal. I started to say, why hadn't I ever heard of it? But the <laughs> truth is, is I probably had heard of it at some point, but I just missed it. And, um, and how many times do we do that? You know, God is trying to drop something in your lap, but it's like, eh, that's not for me. That's not for me. Um, but yeah, I'm so glad that I had the experience. So um, yeah, Corey Beth, let's talk about you. Cause I want to hear about how you came on and, and the transformation, your own transformational story. But before we jump in there, will you share us a little bit about how you two met? Yes. <laughs> so contrary to everyone's belief, um, Mike was not the trainer dating all the clients, even though I did think that at first, <laughs> um, the good news is when we started, he was not my trainer. And so I was searching for gyms in the area. I think I tried every gym landed at pure physique. I was a teacher in my teaching career at that point. And I just, I couldn't believe that this gym was promising, you know, double the results and half the time. I mean, it was some fun logo like that. And so I stepped away for a moment for my training. And when I came back, Mike was my trainer. And for me, I was like, yes, I get the owner. Like, Now I'm going to get the best results. And I'm not sure what you were thinking, but it was not soon after that. He had asked me out. And to be honest, ladies, I, I later found out that his cardinal rule was you do not date a client. And so I was the one time he broke the rule. Uh, it ended up working out great for us, but it was it was a really big struggle because once you find something that finally works after trying every gym in the area, every exercise, every workout, I'm like, my body is transforming. I feel so good. I didn't want him to mess that up for me. And so reluctantly, I went out with him on a date and it was the best decision I've ever made. Wow. I love that. Such That's a great awesome. story. Yeah. Yeah. How long ago was that? 13 years ago. 13 years ago. I guess that's proof that sometimes rules are made to be broken. 
That's yeah. right. That's right. <laughs> so Corey, I, 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 only, wanna... I only broke my rule one time, but it seemed to have worked out. <laughs> yeah, well, I did. Very well, I, I did. did. Corey Beth, I want to touch on something that you were just talking about as you were talking about looking for gyms and the different things. Um, a common reason that women give up on their exercise routines is because they get bored or they don't see results. Um, that kind of thing. How, how do you guys, let's talk about your workouts and how you keep your workouts engaging and keeping your clients from getting bored. Yeah. I think the biggest fear women have going into a gym is I don't know what to do or how to do it. Mm -hmm. And so oftentimes that causes us to just gravitate towards a lot of the cardio equipment, the treadmills, the ellipticals and the spin bikes, because it's simple and it's easy. Mm -hmm. And maybe this was just me. Maybe this is your listeners, but I didn't want to look dumb in a gym. And so I would just avoid the weight section altogether you know, Mike can definitely talk about our program and what makes it different. But the biggest thing that we do in our business, it's building people up. It's building their confidence. It's building their ability. It's showing them they can lift heavier or Teresa, in your case, do a wall squat longer than you ever thought you could. (laughs) We want women to have that confidence because one of the best things that we can do for our bodies as we age is to preserve our muscle mass and Mm -hmm. focus on preserving bone density two things that normally naturally wear away as we age. And so Mike, you definitely can talk to how the workouts keep people coming back. I mean, we've had clients upwards of 12 years that have not left. So the retention, listen, it's fun. Yeah. (laughs) Hey, before we go there, I just really want to throw out there that um, it's not just a gym that you have. I mean, you do have some gyms, but this is also all an online program as well. So anybody can do this all over the nation. It's all through an app. And we can talk more about that later. But I just want our listeners to know that if you don't happen to live in an area where your gym is, uh, you still have access because um, yeah. Melissa and I both are doing this just through the app right. at it just right here at home. And it's amazing. We love it. Well, and and the beautiful part about that is once you have the proper foundation in place, it doesn't matter if you're in a gym or you're working out from home. If you have, you know, the most beautiful set of equipment or you only have dumbbells and a bench, Mm -hmm. it's all about how you position the workouts. It's all about how you program everything. And when it comes to exercise, there really is a hierarchy. And and at the very top of the list is resistance training. And just to be very clear for anyone who's wondering, well, what do you mean specifically by resistance training? I mean, using weight in any form. So that could mean you're using dumbbells. It could mean you're using body weight. Could mean you're using bands or you could be at the gym with a full selection of weight training equipment. The thing that matters is that you are providing resistance against your body. I mean, that is ultimately what's going to help your body change. And so in that hierarchy, we put resistance training at the top, but we know also for a lot of women, they don't want to go into the gym and do the same mind numbing workout Mm -hmm. day after day, week after week, you know, and it might be exciting in the beginning because you're seeing some changes in your body. However, we also recognize the importance of keeping everything engaging and keeping it fun and keeping it unique, yet still sitting on that strong foundation. Mm -hmm. And so what we went ahead and did is with all of our training programs, I mean, we have on both the online and in-studio program, we have something like 24 weeks worth of unique workouts. And within each week, you are never going to do the same workout twice. And the pretty cool thing about it is we broke down what are all the things that people are really looking for from their fitness. They want to look better naked. I'm sorry, but that's usually right near the top (laughs) of the list. Regardless of what anybody says, I'm doing it for my health. You know, my doctor told me I'm supposed to do this. It's like, you want to look better naked. Uh, So that's usually at the top of the list, but then are all the other things. I want to have greater functionality. I want to grow older gracefully. I want to have full function, play with my grandkids, my children, um, have lots of energy. So we, we looked at all the things that people look for, which include building strength, improving their muscle tone, losing body fat, and having greater conditioning. And what we decided to do was we're going to focus on one of those elements specifically for a two week period of time. And then we're going to progress to another one of those focuses for another two week period of time. Now we're always working all of them, 
but the workouts are designed so that it's an emphasis on one of those areas more so than the other three. And by doing that, that's what keeps people engaged. And it's not that any of the workouts are magical, but what's magical is when you put it all together Mm -hmm. and you're able to maintain a routine that only takes you 60 to 90 minutes a week Mm -hmm. that you could do for the rest of your life. That's where the real magic happens. And so our job is just to make it engaging so that you want to keep doing it. I love that. Yeah. That's and good. yeah. And you certainly have. Um, we love, so Melissa and I usually work out together. And so we love to look over, you know, the workouts before we get started and moan when we see a few things on the list. <laughs> and, <laughs> but that's okay. Yep. Uh, you know, this is the thing that is, we have to challenge ourselves. We have to do the things that we love and the things that we don't love if we want real results. And so, um, yeah, you've definitely put together something that's different every single time. Mm-hmm. And what I love about it is you, we can modify anything at any time. And there were a lot of things in the beginning that we had, to, or especially me, that I had to modify Um, but then you find yourself getting better and now you don't have to modify that. Or now you can even add a weight while you're doing the thing that you couldn't even do hardly without a weight, you know, a few weeks before. And so it's, it's so motivating and it's so exciting to see yourself getting stronger and better and all the things. So, so much fun. Well, it's all about progression. And, and I said to you earlier, what hooked me was the result. Yeah. And I think that when we take it back to that being the focus. Am I getting the result I want? I think people tend to get burnt out with their exercise program because they plateau or they're no longer seeing or feeling the results. I mean, at some point we're going to stop progressing maybe in our physical development, but we still want to feel as if we are making progress Mm -hmm. in some way, shape or form. And it's very easy to to get deterred when you're not seeing those results. Yes. Well, you know what it is? I think about even a treadmill or an elliptical because I am definitely a former cardio queen. Thank God, reformed. <laughs> um, but the biggest thing that you'd be able to change in terms of difficulty on a treadmill is the speed maybe, or mm-hmm. you can change the incline on it. But it was all about, okay, like I did 20 minutes. Can I do 25 the next day and 30? It's all about increasing time. Whereas with resistance training, I can go from, I remember starting my, my dumbbell curls. I started at like eight pounds and then I advanced to 10 Mm -hmm. and then I'm like, Ooh, I can do 12, Mm -hmm. you know, and to get up to like 17 and a half or even 20, depending on how strong I'm feeling. I mean, I think that that's where women are like, "Yes, yes, I can do that. And it's not piecemealing things together from YouTube or TikTok. I'm going to do this workout today and that workout the next day. There's an ascension in our program where because you're working different elements that Mike explained, you always feel stronger. You always feel better. And you're not increasing the time you're doing it. And I think for busy women, that's the biggest win. I love it. it. I love it. Um, Corbis, I want to go back to when you first joined. I mean, you were having some health issues. Let's talk about that, how you overcame those through this program. Yeah, I was your typical standard American diet eater. I had packed down about 30 pounds of excess weight and was struggling with an IBS diagnosis. So I had all sorts of gut issues. I had cystic hormonal acne, which if you're not familiar, it's just like a, it's like a beard of acne right around your chin and like the sides of your face. And in fact, it's painful. And so I was a teacher at that point teaching special education and gosh, those kids were a little unforgiving when they would say... (laughs) what's wrong with your face? And I'd be like, Oh my gosh, I'd go home and cry about how I looked and how I felt, you know? And then I was diagnosed with narcolepsy, which is when you fall asleep anywhere. I mean, it was to a point where I remember driving home from my teaching career saying something's got to give, I've got to do something. And so it put me on this path of really wanting to focus on my health. And of course I have this amazing mom that was like, you're perfect. You don't need this. (laughs) But inside, I knew I did. I knew something had to give, something needed to change. So trying out different gyms in the area really put me on this path of trying to find a program that worked for me in terms of time. I was really looking for something that was going to fit into my schedule, fit into my lifestyle. The treadmill didn't work. The elliptical hadn't worked for years. I was at the gym twice a day back in college. None of it worked. And so walking in to Pure Physique, 
I think I was so shocked by the fact that I could spend just 30 minutes doing a workout, feel like I had done 90 minutes of a workout, feel so good. And it was really when Mike started to mention the fact that he was going to start competing for a bodybuilding show that my interest was peaked. You know, I'd started to see some changes in my arms. You know, I just, I felt better. I felt stronger. I remember telling my, my amazing dad, like, check out my arms, check it out. out." (laughs) And when Mike said, I'm going to compete for a bodybuilding show, my natural question was not even one I thought about. I'm like, can I do it too? And he's like, of course you can, you know? And up to that point in my life, this is now 13 years ago, I just felt so bad about myself. I looked at other people and I just thought they were genetically blessed. I thought they were Mm -hmm. lucky. I thought it was just your body is the way you are. It's the genetics that you have. And so when Mike said yes, it was finally that moment where I felt like maybe I did deserve a healthier body. Maybe I could earn a better health, better look, not be bloated all the time. And so going on that journey, it was definitely a change in nutrition plan. And what I did over the course of nine months is I dropped 30 pounds. All of a sudden, my narcolepsy was gone. I wasn't falling asleep watching movies with him on the sofa anymore my face and skin cleared up to the point where people are like, you have such beautiful skin. And there's a part of you inside that laughs like they have no idea. And I got on a bodybuilding stage and it was just such an amazing transformation to finally, for the first time in my life, realize that you can change your body. You can change the way you look. You can have control over how you feel. And that combination of exercise and limiting sugar, changing my diet, putting those two things together was just profound for me Mm. where 13 years later, I still maintain that weight loss. And I think each year my body gets a little bit better, even after having two boys. Wow. I love that. I hope that the women listening heard that. If not, go back and listen to what she just said again. That's so good. It's so good. So let's let's talk about that philosophy now that you guys have, because you emphasize a holistic approach Um, to your fitness. Can you explain the role of nutrition and mindset in achieving the goals that that your clients set? Yeah, I think that the first thing that people typically will ask is, well, if I want to lose all this weight, how much of it is going to be exercise and how much of it is going to be nutrition? And we say it's 100% and 100%. It's, (laughs) It's good. It's both. That said, though, what needs to be kept in mind is that the nutrition really is the driver for the fat loss. I mean, without changing the nutrition, there is no way exercise can play its role. And the role that exercise really plays is more of a supporting actor. And they're not the star of the show. I mean, quite frankly, you need to address the nutrition piece in order to address fat loss. And that's exactly what Corey Beth did. Because there was nothing that changed tremendously between what she was doing with her exercise when uh, she wasn't competing compared to when she did. In fact, we kept it identically the same. There there was no change whatsoever. It was literally the nutrition that changed. Mm -hmm. However, part of the reason why she mentioned she's continuing to see better results year after year is, number one, we continue to refine the nutrition approach. But then number two... The consistency with the exercise, with the resistance training, is what supports your metabolism. So building that muscle is what's going to support a very healthy metabolism. Because when most of us get older and we start to see we're putting on a little body fat, a little extra weight here and there, and why is this happening? It must be my age, which is what everybody says. I'm getting older. (laughs) It has nothing to do with age. What it has to do with is as we age, we tend to lose muscle mass. And with that loss in muscle mass, our metabolism drops. So in this instance, if we're exercising the proper way to maintain our muscle mass, we're going to maintain our metabolism, and then the nutrition can do its job. Uh, I was going to say, the most fascinating for me was showing up to a bodybuilding show and seeing people in their 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s and there was an 80 year old weight class i'm like hold on like yeah. this just shattered everything that i believed about what our bodies were capable of and i think for me that was such a defining moment on the heels of what mike is explaining that your age does not have as much to do with it as we've been conditioned to believe yeah. you actually have far more control over your health than anyone will ever tell you yeah yeah so mike i just want you to say that again because i know that there's a lot of women listening that 
again, you know, we're hitting middle age, a little bit older, we do start this fat. It's not as easy to lose weight when you're older. So I want you to say what you were just saying again about fat loss um, and how it fits in as far as diet and exercise. Can you just repeat that? Yeah. As far as fat loss is concerned, I mean, the nutrition does play the biggest role. And if we are not addressing the nutrition piece, then nothing else that we do is going to make a big difference. And I'll even just go ahead and drop a little research on you guys for just a moment. (laughs) A lot of the research points to the fact that if we're just trying to exercise the weight off, we're going to have a heck of a time doing it. In fact, they did a study using identical twins, and what they showed is that they were able to get them to lose 10 pounds of fat over the course of 93 days. And they're like, that sounds pretty good. 93 days, lose 10 pounds? Okay, that's not bad, especially if it's all body fat. Here was the problem. They were doing cardiovascular exercise as the main form of exercise, and they had to do two hours of it a day for 93 days straight in order to lose only 10 pounds of body fat. Yeah. Let that sink in for a moment. Yeah. If you are out there slaving away on the treadmill or you are beating your knees as you train for a marathon, because you think that that is going to be the path to losing the excess weight. It's not. Mm hmm. It's much easier to address the nutritional piece because the the nutritional piece is not just an equation of calories in and calories out. What we oftentimes teach people is your body doesn't operate like a scale where it's energy in and energy out. I mean, yes, it does operate that way to some degree, but it more acts like a thermostat. And what we mean by that is If there is less energy coming in, there's less calories coming in. Your body has to go searching for a way to replace those calories. And that's when your body is tapping into fat for energy. But if we are eating far fewer calories, right? We put ourselves on one of those starvation diets. Mm -hmm. And then we think, you know what? Let me go and burn 300 to 500 calories a day on this treadmill. Well, your body recognizes that this is not a great place for me to be. Like it's very hard for your body to operate hormonally and carry out all its regular energy systems throughout the day if we're constantly bombarding it with all this stress. So what does your metabolism do? It just downregulates, just like that thermostat. It turns down the need for more calories. So I always I always think about when I was growing up, in the dead of winter, my father would keep the thermostat set to 62 degrees. So mean. And we were <laughs> We were absolutely frigid. I mean, here we are in New York, right? It's the dead of winter and it's 62 degrees in the house. But the reason why he did that was because, well, he was being thrifty. He wanted to save on his energy bill, right? He wanted to conserve oil. Now think about your body for a moment. Your body wants to conserve energy. And if you keep putting all these demands on it by over-exercising and under-eating, your body's going to say, well, we can't keep up with those demands. It's going to cost us too much energy. So let's just turn down the heat. Let's make it so that our body learns how to operate on less. And this is exactly what we try to address through nutrition is we want to get the body into proper hormonal balance. And when we're in proper hormonal balance, then our body will use energy, energy in and energy out the way it's designed to. And it's at that point that we are utilizing fat as our primary source of energy. Mm. Yeah. You know, whenever you start talking about all this, here's the truth. Everybody wants to look good. Everybody wants to feel good, but we don't want to make the sacrifices necessary most of the time. It's that way with every single thing in the world. We all want to make a lot of money, but everybody's not willing to do what it takes, all the things. Um, And I know that as some of our listeners are listening, um, they're thinking, I don't, you know, it's usually one of two things. I don't want to exercise. I hate to exercise or man, I just want to eat whatever I want to eat. Uh, So, and then for me, I love, I, I got addicted to the whole working out thing. So I actually love that, enjoy that, but I also love food. And so I'm still in a process of learning 
and getting it under control. I mean, Mm -hmm. you know, for me, it's just a battle all the time. I don't want to say, I mean, I can call it a battle, but um, I mean, I guess that's really what it is. I'm learning. And I definitely think that is what a lot of people are lacking because there's so much out there. Like you can pull up any article and five of them are going to say five different things. Um, So, but I do think that our listeners should educate themselves about what is the healthy foods. I know for me, uh, way before I ever worked out, every time I wanted to lose weight, I would do the 100 calorie thing. You know, you can buy just about anything that says 100 calories or less. I lived on the 100 calorie (laughs) stuff. I could eat 100 calorie brownie and a bag of chips that was under 100. I mean, no thing good in that. There was no nutrition in that. Yeah, I would drop the weight that I wanted to, to drop. But who wants to live on that forever? It's not, you know, you can't live that way. So it's truly adapting a lifestyle. And, you know, I love to talk about how we can do hard things. So I do want to take a minute just to speak to the audience mm-hmm. and say, as you're listening to this, uh, I know some of them have already tuned out. They're like, eh, that's not even a fun conversation. Um, but listen, our our bodies, first of all, it's a temple. We are the temple of God. Yes, and it's all we have on this earth. And we have to take care of it. And we, and we do exactly like Mike said, we want to look good. We want to feel good. We want to have energy. And so I, I hope to inspire women or, you know, any of our listeners that goodness, we can do hard things. Let's decide that we are going to take care of this body. Anybody can figure out how to fit in th- three 30 minute workouts a week. Right. And then we have to do all the other things that you're talking about. We have to figure out um, this eating and how to put the healthy things in our body. And um, I don't think we have to cut out all of the bad things, but we definitely have to prioritize and figure out how to how to get, you know, get that in without sabotaging everything that we're accomplishing. Trying well, to, to your point, Teresa, I think the biggest marketing ploy that got pulled over all of our eyes was causing us to count calories over ingredients. Yes. You know, mm-hmm. you start to look at those hundred calorie yes. packs and you see it's unbleached this and bleached that and re-enriched and all this other stuff. It's not just wheat. <laughs> it's not just the ingredient. It's all these. And then we get to throw vitamins in because we bleach the heck out of the wheat mm-hmm. to make it look good or taste good or whatever it was. And definitely I fell into that for a long time too. I mean, gosh, I was eating pretzels and peanut butter telling everyone I was being healthy. <laughs> about a pretzel. When you start to look at all the ingredients in a pretzel, you know, the biggest thing that we try to teach our two young boys is there's food that God gave us. There's things that grow and live and breathe and thrive. And then there's factory food. You know, it's everything in the middle of the supermarket. It's made in a factory. And at the end of the day, I don't believe that that's what God intended to us, intended us to put in our bodies. Um, And there's a time and a place. We don't deprive our kids. You know, they had ice cream yesterday. They'll maybe have a little dessert tonight. But it's just that awareness that I I wish Mm -hmm. as a former educator that we were taught in school, that there's food that gives us energy and makes us feel mentally clear and makes us feel good and we're not bloated and we have normal bowel movements. Mm -hmm. And then there's food that disrupts all of that. And typically that's food that man makes with tons of ingredients of it that really wasn't designed for us to consume. Oh, yeah, Yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah. And a big problem is that people don't realize that they don't feel good until they feel better. And then they're like, oh my goodness, this is what health feels like. Right. And so making some changes, even temporarily just to, to get on that, um, to, to get it in motion, I guess you feel a difference. You, it'll motivate you to stay in motion as far as diet and exercise. I agree. I agree. Okay. Let's talk a little bit about, I want to know your thoughts on, um, keto, intermittent fasting, all of those things. What are your thoughts about all that? What I will preface this with is we would never recommend anything that we wouldn't try ourselves. And by try ourselves, I mean, put ourselves through a six to 12 month process of beta testing or sampling something before we'd ever bring it to our clients. And then Mike is buried in research papers and studies and science. So we always want to make sure that whatever we put our name behind, it's something that some studies are going to prove it. Some studies are going to disprove mm-hmm. it, but that's the same with everything, right? Your coffee is good. Coffee is bad. Eggs are good. Eggs are bad. Who do we believe? <laughs> right. You know, we want things to be research based and backed. 
And so our journey led us through a process of realizing that meal plans really are not sustainable. For most people, you'll follow them for maybe a, maybe a day, maybe three, if you're really a unicorn. But beyond that, people don't want to utilize that. So I'll let Mike tell a little bit how we came upon intermittent fasting, which we used to believe was starving until we educated. <laughs> and we used to believe keto was like eating butter and bacon and so unhealthy for <laughs> us. And then we got a little more educated. So we went through the same journey that most people go through. We definitely did not just arrive here with this is what we do. It was a process. Well, I'm happy to, to get into this topic, but I just am going to go back for a moment because Teresa, you said something about, you know, the difficulty that that this process can be for many people, the difficulty of changing their nutrition and they don't want to do it. And that you even for yourself, that's the, mm-hmm. the bigger challenge. And that speaks largely into the the mindset component yes. of what we do with with coaching people. It's understanding that there is no jump right into it and you're going to do it perfectly, you know, and that's even how we arrived at what we do nutritionally is we've done so many things wrong and, and we progressed through that and you learn from that. And so just as a word is of encouragement to anyone out there listening, who's saying, wow, this does sound like it's a lot of work. It sounds like it's hard. It sounds that way because you're starting from the beginning but I guarantee when you're viewing it in the middle, it won't seem as bad as it, it did initially. Yes. And then when you progress a year or years beyond that, and you've been doing it for quite a while, you look back and say, you know what, that that short period of difficulty was worth it. Yes. I think you told me 13 years ago that I would be happy giving up mint chocolate chip ice cream and animal crackers. <laughs> and I would still enjoy my life. I wouldn't have believed you. <laughs> but I can tell you today that I enjoy many days, if not most days, without ever even having animal crackers has been years. So it is possible. It is a process. Yeah. I think that what the way we arrived here will actually relate to a lot of people because even though we were competing in bodybuilding, Corey Beth did uh, women's physique, what we realized was that in order to get into that shape, it took a lot of discipline. It took a lot of restriction. It took a lot of deprivation. And we did it. You know, we arrived, so to speak, got into the best shape ever. But throughout that process, we had to count every calorie. We had to track every gram of protein, carbohydrate, mm-hmm. and fat that we consumed. And what happened was, is after, for me, it was a, a 13 year career of bodybuilding. Corey Beth did uh, four years, I believe, what? And it finally got to the point where we said, you know what, we're kind of done with this part of our yeah. life where we're on to family and more focused on business. But I remember feeling somewhat defeated and depressed, if you will, because I recognized one day that I will never look like that again yeah. because there's no way I could keep up with that type of lifestyle. Yeah, right. You have to constantly be tracking and measuring and weighing and food prepping. But the beautiful part about that is when you're in that situation, you turn around and say, what, what could I do about this? Mm -hmm. What could we do different? And that set us on a path to try to find a way to eat, which didn't require us to weigh and measure our food or track everything in my fitness pal, yet still look like we did when we'd be on stage. And I think the first thing that we stumbled upon or really Corey Beth stumbled upon was keto. And I was making fun of her because she was, you know, putting bacon cheese on everything and butter in her coffee. And I'm like, you are out of your freak mind, girl. Like, what are you doing? And then she pulled me in. And I, once I got sucked in, it was game over. Because now I'm starting to look at the science and the research. I'm like, oh, there's something here. And then it Ooh, intermittent fasting. Let's add that in. And we start doing these long fasts and everything has worked great. And like Corey Beth mentioned, you know, we did that for about six to nine months before we ever recommended any of it, any of our clients, but we, we presented it as, Hey, this is a way that you could probably eat and not have to track everything. Mm-hmm. So people did it. They started getting great results, but then we recognized over time that maybe not everybody could keep up with the keto thing. And so we we revised the plan a little to maybe be more on the paleo side. Let me just throw in here because we had clients that were getting 
keto granola and keto bread and keto snacks. And we're like, that is not part of the program. So the revision <laughs> is marketing. Yeah, that, exactly. And, and that is a big problem overall is that anytime anyone finds something good, they have great results initially because they do it exactly as yeah. it's laid out. And then when they get bored or they're feeling that restriction, all of a sudden they want to change things or Add alter things. things to yeah. Like yeah. Things yeah. that got them in trouble in the first place. They want to get cute. You can't get cute. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I feel like we could do another whole episode just on the whole intermittent fasting yes. and keto, the nutrition, paleo, side. The nutrition side. I really would love to do that because I know we don't have time to like really dive into that today. But um, I know if I am that curious, I know a lot of our listeners would. Yeah. So would y'all be up for another? Yeah, Absolutely. another episode uh, okay, sure. where we just jump right into to that. And because I do believe that our our listeners need to hear experts and not every influencer and every, you know, Somebody telling us don't eat the the paleo package or you know all of those things yeah. because the average person truly doesn't know and it's very difficult to decipher what is really good marketing versus truth. There's so much information out there now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Information and misinformation. Yeah, yeah. 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 So our listeners um, have heard your stories and and seen you guys. Um, hopefully some of them have seen seen yeah. y'all. Um, through one of our events. And Teresa and I are both testimonies of your program and how great it is. We love it. But I know you guys have a couple of quick stories um, or testimonies that you wanted to share. And I'd like to just open that up for you guys to share really quick about those. Yeah. So one of your students, actually, Maria, had such a profound experience. She was one of the last people at Reen Live that came up and she's like, okay, I've put this off long enough. I'm ready to have a conversation with you. And so we chatted a bit about what she wanted to do and what it would look like. And I think for her now about two, one and a half to two months later, she is so shocked that she can go on vacation and she can be around family and she can be, you know, in old elements where old habits might have picked up. Mm -hmm. And she got on a call recently and said, you'll never believe it. I was away with my family for a week. I had little to no control over the food being served, but I didn't gain any weight. In fact, I lost a pound while I was away. Wow! And in, in total, she's down about 10 pounds, which over the course of 10 weeks is really impressive. Yes, and that it is. is. Weight loss. We don't want to be losing, you know, 50 pounds. She did a lot better than that. Did she? She lost 11 pounds in five weeks. There you go. Wow. wow. Nice. Woo, go Maria. I'm the story girl. <laughs> yeah. I, I keep up on the details. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Beth will give you a nice overview that makes you feel really good about the story. I, I'm going to come in with the facts. 11 pounds in five weeks. My that's gosh, awesome. that's amazing. Well, and what about Diane? Hers was just amazing. Diane was another one. So when we together ran the first six-week challenge back in March, Diane had signed up. And since doing that challenge until just yesterday when I spoke to her, she had lost in total 22 pounds. And mm -hmm. I'm not going to give away ages, but Diane's a little further up there than <laughs> some people and, and would fall into that category of at this stage, you're probably not going to lose much. She's vintage. And yet she dropped 22 pounds. But I think what was most exciting was she told me how just last week she was away at a Tony Robbins event in Fiji. And one of the things that they challenged them to do is they had a 20 foot uh, was a telephone pole that they got harnessed to and had to climb to the top and then stand on the top of it. Oh, wow. wow. And she's standing in line. And the young gentleman who is helping people get harnessed up turns around very innocently, turns to her and says, are, are you sure you're good to do this? <sighs> and she immediately just kind of shot back. Are you saying I'm too old to do this? <laughs> and he, again, he was a very, he was being more cautious than anything. Yeah. He said, well, yeah. Well, she said that that gave her the determination to climb that pole. But as she's going up, all she could think about was how there's no way she could have done this if she had not lost the weight and built the strength that she built yes, I love since that. March until today. Woo! And that is what enabled her to get to the top of that 20 foot pole and stand on top <sighs> and scream out, 
I did it. Oh, oh that's I awesome. love that. That is a great story. It is a, yeah, I love it because that is what health and fitness is all about. It's not just about losing weight. It's about what changes on the inside of you. Again, not just physically, but emotionally, mentally, yeah. um, yeah, I, I, you start when you start seeing that you can do hard things in a gym, then you start knowing that you can do hard things in life. Yes. And that we're not victims to every hard thing or when something happens, we can change what we weigh. We can change how strong we are. We can change all of, how much money we make. We can make changes in our life um, when we realize that we are not victims. We yeah. own our lives and we make decisions about our lives every single day. We have a lot more control than we think we do. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. This is so, so good. Um, so I know that we are, I am so excited that we partnered with you because once we started seeing the benefits mm -hmm. of what you were doing, you know, in, in, in our lives, I said, Hey, I want all of my students to have access to, to pure physique and to Mike and Corey Beth. And, um, so we are so excited that we've partnered with you guys to, um, you know, just offer this entire program again, online. Or if you happen to be in, in one of those areas that have a gym and you want to go to the gym, but you can do this from your house. You can do this outside, inside. If you go to a gym, you can just because it's all on an app, which is absolutely amazing, where you literally mm -hmm. have Mike talking you all the way through the workout, reminding you about form, telling you exactly what to do, helping you to keep pace. Um, so it's absolutely amazing. And I'm so excited to offer it to all of our students. You've already mentioned a couple of them that have had really great results and, um, we were doing six week challenges. And so just really quickly, can you explain what a six week challenge looks like? Yeah, of course. Um, and I just have to say, we're so honored to have you in the program. It was a really big dream of ours to impact 10,000 people, 10,000 families. And we're looking at this big goal together, like, okay, we're, we're in New York and Connecticut. How are we going to do this? <laughs> and, it, you know, you would just not even imagine what God could do. And God put Teresa and I in a room together and to be able to expand what we can offer people through your program and your women, it just, it fills our hearts knowing that we are fulfilling the mission and purpose that we believe God has put here for. Um, in terms of the six week challenge, there's four elements to it. So the first are workouts. There's 30 minute workouts all delivered right through the app. You get to check them off when you're done and earn badges as you go. Mm -hmm. Our nutrition has three different paths to really follow. No meal plans, no counting, no measuring. We just keep it very simple. Um, we want people to achieve intuitive eating. The third element is mindset. So we do offer weekly mindset and nutrition coaching calls for people to get on when they're stuck, get real answers, get that coaching, not just be on their own. I think a lot of programs mm -hmm. are just self-serve where you just, you do it and you figure it out. We love to be hands-on with our people. And then the last piece is the glue, which is the accountability that I think keeps them coming back, keeps them committed, keeps amazing women like you that are so busy on your workouts, in your workouts. I mean, accountability is, I think, what most of us are missing when it comes to our health and fitness. And so all four of those elements make up our six-week challenge. For sure. Oh, Goodness, I, love I love that. So good. So good. We're excited to be a part of it. Yes, <laughs> we are. Yeah, they're doing it. Lastly, you've been promoting the challenge on your podcast and beyond. What other exciting things do you guys have in the pipeline? Yeah, that's a great question. So we do have a podcast called That Fitness Couple, where we do amazing expert interviews with other medical doctors in the field, other fitness professionals. And of course, we're sharing you know lots of FAQs and pieces of our story. And then Pure Physique is also a fitness franchise. So people can open a studio in any city, anywhere. They're going to get total support, lots of plug and play programs in place. And um, as one of our mentors recently shared, he's like, you guys have really cracked the code. These workouts are great. Love the color, love the this. So mm -hmm. it really is a business in a box for someone that's looking to have another stream of revenue or pursue a passion in fitness. Oh, oh that's so yeah. awesome. Yeah. I love so that. if any of you ladies are ready to invest into a pure physique facility, well, then you, you've got to talk to Mike and Corey Beth, yes. as well as listening to that fitness couple. Love your podcast. I got to actually be um, a guest on there. Just 
It hasn't even come out yet, but so I love everything you're doing. And again, we've partnered. So if any of our listeners want to uh, give this a try and join us for one of our six weeks challenges, then reach out. Um, Pure physique. Well, you share, what is the, how, how can somebody contact y'all? Yeah. Purephysique.com. Definitely so important that you mention that you're with Reen, that you came from Teresa and Melissa, because we do have special discounts off our challenges and our weekly workout subscription for you. And um, yeah, that Reen 1000 discount is just for you ladies. Woo-hoo. Nice. Awesome. Awesome. Okay, Teresa, I just want you to share a couple of your takeaways. I know there's, we've talked about <laughs> so much and they've given us so much information, but let's, let's get a couple of takeaways. Oh my gosh. Uh, I am fired up. I'm excited. That That's what I would walk away from here. And I'm hoping that our listeners are, listen, your health is your wealth. Your health is everything. Yes. It, it, what difference does it make? Um, how much money you have or what you're accomplishing in life if your health is not good. So I'm hoping that people are fired up about saying, hey, I want to get healthy. And here's a way. There's there there's literally somebody's giving you a gift of telling we're, we've got the mindset for you. We've got exactly how to do it. We can tell you how to eat. We can help you with all the things. Things. Um, I, you literally have list of things that should be on your diet, shouldn't be on your diet, all of those things. Um, so you just make it super simple. So yeah, that's my takeaway is uh, get into pure physique and uh, find yes. a new physique. <laughs> You're going to be excited about. That's true. Well, again, thank you all so much for being here today. I know our listeners loved it. And if you are listening and you have not subscribed to Without Fear for Future Podcast, then hit that subscribe button today for new episode reminders. Thank you so much for joining us today. On behalf of the Women's Real Estate Investors Network and Teresa Todd, I'm Melissa Baker, encouraging you to be brave and dream big.